Hey everyone, Coach Gay here. Today we have a special interview with Farab Network's Ian Friend. He's the COO. We have some really awesome information that we're going to go over by the end of this video, so stay tuned. We have a really awesome um, setup that we have for this interview. It's going to be quick and concise, so just stick around. It'll only be 15 or 20 minutes of your time, but stay to the end. You don't want to miss what we're going to uh, talk about by then. Ian, how's it going? Great, Joel. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Oh yeah, one other thing guys before we start, smash up some likes, hit that subscribe button. Let's get it done. So Ian, great having you here. Uh, the first thing I want to ask is, uh, just for people that don't know, because maybe there's some people that haven't done research but heard a lot about Ferrum Network, what is Ferrum Network? Great, so um, I'll just try to keep this simple and brief, but Ferrum Network can really be thought of two, as two interconnected components. You have a high-speed interoperability network, um, and then you have the products that run on top of it. Nice. So basically what, what I'll, and I'll break that down for you real quick, but the interoperability network is designed to connect to any blockchain and then facilitate the exchange and transactions of any asset very fast, very cheap. So for instance, you can bring a Bitcoin into the Ferrum network and then transact it over our own network in milliseconds for near zero fees. Nice. The... Uh, uh, the product component of it, I think, is really key because we took a different approach to a lot of other projects. Uh, I find that a lot of other projects take, the, take this sort of field of dreams. You know, if, if we build it, they will come. We decided that doesn't really work in, in the real world. You have to build useful products, acquire users for those products, and then you can actually migrate those onto your network to achieve network, you know, utility and, and token utility. So that's what we've decided to do. Right on. That's awesome. So a real project making real products, not just banking on the token. That's, that's a good, <laughs> uh, you know, we've had enough of those products are, or projects that are all about their token and not about anything else. You guys seem to have an opposite approach, which is really good. I think that's great. Makes uh, There's a reason why people have been calling you guys diamonds and gems and stuff like that, because they see something in you uh, because you're doing it the right way, which is great. Um, so in terms of that, like where, where are you trying to like kind of impact? What are you guys trying to really like do? So like, you know, you say you're going to make it really simple. So I know you're going to make it really fast, seamless transactions. Um, where is the impact you guys are kind of like to, to get into first? What market are you going to? Um, and, you know, what is like your, your ultimate goal of Ferrum Network? What are you guys trying to achieve in the long term? Great. So um, I'm glad you talk about markets because, um, again, it goes back to focusing on solving problems and, and, and finding those places where blockchain and cryptocurrencies really can make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. And so the first um, product that we've launched, it's already live. It has users. Um, it went live in, in, uh, at the end of May. It's called Cootie Exchange. And that is a fiat to crypto exchange plus payments app. You can sort of think of it like Coinbase plus Venmo, but for Africa. Um, it, 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 the first country it's uh, been launched in is Nigeria. We'll be expanding to Ghana uh, next. And we're also looking at Kenya and some other uh, countries around the continent. But basically the idea is um, bring a simple to use app that allows you to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and send actual money around uh, for zero transaction fees uh, instantly. Um, no, so the, the sending money part is <laughs> zero, zero transaction fees, let me be clear. Uh, and, and in doing so, solve real people's problems because there's a lot of issues with banking and other uh, uh, financial um, problems in, 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 that, in that part of the world. Awesome. Actually, um, if you guys look, I've actually done a little bit of uh, seeking about Cootie Exchange because I, when I first saw you guys. And you can actually see on, I think it's C CNN News or Business, something, CNN Business or something. They were actually uh, on... TV talking about uh, uh, Cootie Exchange. Uh, am, am I, I'm, I'm not wrong about that, right? Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't C, it wasn't CNN. It was, it's better than CNN. BBC. It was BBC. Okay, <laughs> yes. I knew it was like one of those. And yeah, I, I saw that start. segment. It looked really awesome. Uh, and, you know, what I saw, the most important thing that I actually saw was people from those countries saying, 
uh, this is actually easier for us to do for our business. We have no banks here. It's really difficult. So you guys are not just, you know, making it for, you know, the Western world, which most countries are, or most projects are, sorry. You're actually trying to, you know, integrate into the real world problems that crypto can solve, which is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, if you look around um, the market right now, the global crypto market, uh, you can, you can, you, you see what's happening in the West, right? It's mostly the use case for crypto in the West is mostly speculating on price. Yeah. Uh, most people do not actually transact with Bitcoin or, or other cryptocurrencies, even stable coins, even though I think they're well suited for it. Yeah. However, in developing uh, uh, markets, in emerging markets, um, where their own currency may be a relatively unstable, there actually is a use case for cryptocurrencies as a medium of exchange. And you see that actually happening in places like Nigeria, where businesses are adopting cryptocurrencies. People are very open to this new technology. Um, of course, they have access to, to smartphones, and it's, there's really a deep smartphone penetration. So it's really a perfect market in terms of need. Um, and there wasn't a lot of other people solving for these problems, was really just a handful of competitors. And we feel like there's no one else doing the same things we're doing uh, with Kuti uh, in Africa. That's awesome. I mean, that's great. You know, Libra, Libra's trying to do it, but they're getting a lot of scrutiny. And it seems like you guys have already kind of penetrated that market, which is awesome. Now, there's a couple other products. You said you, you, you didn't say product, which a lot of projects are just making a product. You're making products plural. Uh, so one of them is the Unifier wallet. What are the, um, what is the Unifier wallet? What is that going to do? How is it different from another wallet? Um, and you said there's like maybe another exchange coming. Um, maybe you can elaborate on that. Sure. So yeah, the one, um, one of the notable things about Ferrum network is that it does support a host of financial driven applications, uh, i.e. products. And so, uh, after Cootie, the decision was made, to release our, our second product, which is called Unifier Wallet. This is a, a non-custodial uh, multi-currency crypto, multi-currency wallet. It doesn't involve fiat, um, but so it's non-custodial in the sense that it doesn't hold your private keys. However, uh, it uses some advanced uh, encrypt, encryption technology that um, effectively enables users to recover their crypto if, in case your phone is, is lost or stolen. So it's sort of, um, in my view, a best of both worlds. It's, it's, uh, you, don't, you don't have to trust an exchange, but you also don't have to trust yourself fully. <laughs> and I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people out there that um, are in that sort of in-between. They don't want to keep their self exchange. They don't really want to deal with the hassle of, of, or the risks of, of being a full custodian of their, of their assets. So that's version one of Unifier is going to really be solved for that problem. Later versions will introduce other functionalities once Unifier is migrated onto the Ferrum mainnet. That's awesome. Um, you were saying something, I, I think, a while back to me about you might be able to even stake on that wallet. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, one of the um, other things about the Ferrum network itself is that uh, we'll be introducing staking as a means for, of securing the network and basically uh, those who run nodes and, and, and uh, confirm transactions can be rewarded for, for effectively doing that job. And uh, in terms of how it works from the user standpoint, it's going to be quite simple. Through the Unifier wallet, it's going to be a button, you know, press stake. <laughs> we haven't worked out the details of the rewards or how, you know, how long one should stake for what the rewards would be, but um, we're really excited for that feature. I think um, the rest of the community is, is as well. Nice. Okay. So why should people, I mean, let me just reverse myself back. Actually, you just said something that solves probably one of the biggest issues in crypto, which is I want to be my own bank but can I trust myself to be my own bank? And I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. for me and you, maybe you've been in crypto for quite some time. We're like, sure, this is easy. You know, put your private keys in a couple places, split them up, whatever you need to do. You have a plan already. But the average new user coming in is like, this is freaking scary. I mean, yeah, in Africa, maybe they don't have banks. So they're like, yo, this is the best thing ever. But for people like us or people like friends of ours in, you know, North America or Canada or um, other places in Europe, they might be like, this sounds great, 
but we've had this money in the bank and it's insured and all that stuff. So it's kind of like an insurance policy through Unifier Wallet. It's like, yes, if you make a mistake and you lose it, you know, within a few clicks of a button or maybe a little bit more than that, you'll be actually able to recover that crypto, which, right, I mean, four, mi four million Bitcoin have been lost technically. I have two, 2 2.5 of mine have been lost because of this stuff. So, I mean, that's something to also think about, right? Yo, absolutely. I think it's one of the fundamental challenges that's preventing crypto from being more widely adopted, like you're saying before. And we're, you know, we're not a company that's really interested in just poaching users off, you know, a few of the other walls that are existing out there, right? Yeah. Our goal is to broaden the tent, uh, bring millions of more people into crypto, and that's how we can all succeed, not, you know, not, not just Ferrum as a project, but for really the entire crypto space. So, yeah, I think, you know, these are, these are really fundamental challenges. And until, you know, I, I would say in, until your grandma can use, you know, can you can go and, and, and use crypto, um, we're, we're going to remain pretty niche. So, so we, you know, I don't know, I don't, I can't say we'll be the ones that will solve this ultimate challenge, but we're working on it. I know others are as well. And it's, you know, it's an exciting time to be in the space. Yeah. So, I mean, I was going to ask you like why people should care, but I mean, that's, that's enough in itself why they should care about fair number. It's like, you're not just there to kind of be somebody. And the thing is like, you said it to me before, it feels like there's so many people backing you. You have like hundreds of employees that don't actually work for you technically. <laughs> because like everyone's like really supportive of the project because they see what you're doing and it's something that's good for not just the space but it's good for like oh like it is good for the space but it could be good for the world some of the things that you guys are working on and people think that a is admirable and b the fact that you're not raising an insane am insane amount of money like 2017 to do it you're raising what you really just need that's another really honorable thing in this you know world of crypto that many people have been you know feeling like you know if you see like what's been happening with a lot of the releases of these tokens that aren't on Binance, basically, um, that do IEOs, you know, they're, they're, they're dumping really quickly. They raise too much money. So it's something where like, if you've ever looked at metrics, if you don't know what metrics are guys, um, you know, a little educational moment, you look at like token supply, you look at how much money they're raising, the lockup periods and all this stuff. And like Ferrum has probably one of the best ones. I know who some of the people they've worked with are very skilled in this, uh, in, inside of uh, doing token metrics and, and setting this up. So it seems like, you know, you guys have done it the right way. And it's also a reason why, you know, people that leak usual negative stuff are leaking positive stuff about your network. Uh, and so that's, that's something really, you know, it, it, it says a lot about what you guys are doing. And I, I really appreciate it myself seeing that, you know, when companies actually come out and they're like, they're a real company trying to do real things and not just going into this, like, you know, this haze of IEO, ICO boom type of stuff, which is great. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we didn't quit our comfortable professions to just be a flash in the pan. Yeah. Um, just speaking from a personal level. So this was always a long-term um, thing for us, me and, me and my co-founder, Naeem. So, you know, to do things, uh, we, you know, to take shortcuts and, you know, raise too much, do an IEO, the coin crashes, you, 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 you're, you go into oblivion and the game's over and, I, and I'm back to being a lawyer in a year from now. No, no one wants that, right? So it wasn't actually that big of a decision for us to say, you know what, look, we don't actually need millions upon millions of dollars to achieve our roadmap goals. We're a very, very lean startup. We're blessed because the co-founder is, you know, is pro prolific, uh, engineer who you know used to get paid a, a ton and now we pay ourselves fairly anything um, so we can do a lot on a little and that was I think demonstrated when we built cootie exchange on a seed fund round of about a hundred thousand yeah. so we looked at all that and we said you know what we don't need all this money let's raise just just basically bare minimum of what we need 1.12 million um, and then there's been this tremendous I think positive sentiment um, as a side effect of that, like you're saying, the community getting behind us, other interest, you know, powerful influencers, yourself and others, um, who really I think view as a breath breath of fresh air. So now, now it does feel like we have like a hundred employees or whatever you said, and it's it's just great. It feels fantastic. We've come such a long way, and, and I just want to thank everyone who's been 
uh, instrumental in helping us get here. You, you were saying you had a cushy job. Um, maybe you could tell people what you were doing before, just so that they understand what you gave up to do this. Well, it was cushy in the sense of salary is good, but uh, I hated it. Um, yeah, but what yeah, were you doing, though? Well, I used to be a lawyer in New York City. I mean, <laughs> I was, you know, one of these, like, 800-person law firms, and you work all crazy hours, and, uh, you know, so look, some people love it. I have friends who love it. It, it wasn't for me, and so um, – no, we're we're not we're not just in this for a quick pump and dump. We're we're really in this to for for the very very long term, and and if it meant some hardship in the beginning, like every startup should have, by the yeah. way, no startup should should be millionaires out the gate. That doesn't help anybody. Yeah. Um, then that's that's how and then that's how it's going to be. So, um, yeah, I think finally our 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 um, frugality, our hard work, everything's sort of finally paying off. Uh, now it's moving to the ICO. And that's the way it should be, honestly. That's awesome. All right, so now that you said ICO, let's kind of jump into that and then uh, maybe wrap up. So you guys chose a really different path uh, to do your ICO. One that, I mean, if you've been in crypto since 2017 and you saw, you know, Prima Block come around and they have these uh, smart contracts, they do pools. You saw that a lot with like the biggest pools that were out there. But then you guys chose to do it on Prima Block, which I, I, I kind of know the backstory of why you would choose Prima Block and why you could trust them. I'm just curious, and I'm sure other people are curious, why you chose Prima Block to do it. Yeah, so I think um, you have to backtrack a little bit and even um, start with why ICO, right? Because yeah. that, is, I mean, why Prima Block is, is, is interesting, but, all, but why, why ICO when we're in sort of this IE in midst of an IEO craze is I think also an interesting question. It really came down to how do we reward um, and, and enable our community uh, to get involved with with the raise. Um, ha, ha, you know, these there's been people who've been with us through thick and thin, um, and, and we didn't want bots and scripts to basically lock them out. Um, and, and when you looked at when you looked at the IEO landscape, it became pretty clear that almost all the benefits accrued to the exchange itself, not to not to the people who really deserve it. So um, IEO felt like uh, the right decision for us, and, and it's, it's resonated really well with the community. Why Prima Block? Um, you know, we looked around and said, okay, do we, you know, I don't, we don't necessarily want to pull our engineers off, off Unifier, which is being developed now, uh, to, to write these smart contracts and stuff. We, we facilitated uh, our private sales with Prima Block. We thought it was a really um, simple easy to use, great user experience, extremely trusted, been around for a long time. But the thing that honestly sealed the deal was we were introduced to Tamir, who's the CTO of Prime Block, and he was just fantastic with customer service, walking us through all the steps, helping us design the sale around what was possible. It's not through, through Prime Block. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know if we're going to start a trend with ICOs. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to start a trend with ICOs through Prime Block. I know they have actually been looking into doing that uh, before the IEO craze started, and then sort of abandoned it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I you know, I'm hopeful that this this sale will be very smooth, uh, very easy for people, and so uh, they'll then understand why Prime Block was a great choice. Oh, I, I think it's great. Like I've used Prime Block myself. It's really fluid. Hey, I've even actually been in an IEO or ICO where it was like we did a raise on Prima Block, there was an issue, and then, the, like you said, the customer service is fantastic. And not only that, um, you know, I had one time where I was like, we can refund your, your crypto, and it was like someone else was like, no, nah, I'll pick it up, and they even facilitated that. So it, it, is, it is a really, like, smooth service. They're really good and on top of it. So I, I do think it's, it's something that's interesting. I don't know with ICOs if, if that's, like, going to come back at all at any point, like personally, just because I'm a little bearish on ICOs and IEOs, but not on yours, obviously. Um, but it's great to see that, you know, you're using something that's already there. You're not wasting time and resources. You're kind of just like, all right, this works already. We know it's proven. Millions of people have heard it, probably millions of people have used this service. So let's just go with that. I like that. And then obviously, um, you guys just closed out your KYC, so I guess that means that you're pretty much subscribed all up, right? Yeah, there was tremendous uh, demand um, from, from you know, really it felt like all four corners of the crypto sphere, uh, you know, so many people joining, and it really felt, felt like the culmination of over a year of hard work 
for us to get to this point. So yeah, that, I mean, that's fantastic. The, the KYC is closed. Um, so uh, if you want to buy Ferrum, you're, uh, uh, you know, I, I would direct you to our exchange partner, BitMax. Uh, we'll be listing on uh, BitMax on August 5th, um, USDT and BTC pairs. So, uh, you know, you can get ready for that. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a hell of a journey to get here, but we're just, just getting started. Yeah, it's only, and that's like, well, it depends on where you live in the world. That's three days for you and two days for me <laughs> from now. Um, that's pretty exciting. I, I'm really looking forward to how that's going to go. You guys do have a cool round system where it's like $1,000 for like the first level and you have like, you leveled it off and then it's like a gas war, which is super 2017. I love it. I remember doing them. You're trying to get in, you're putting more gas on the Ethereum network to get in. Uh, but then you're also, you know, when you did the I did a KYC form, you have not just Ethereum, but you're also BNB wallet you had to put in there. So you guys have something maybe going along that line as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we did a lot of weird things. But <laughs> <laughs> there's one takeaway: is firm does not uh, uh, go go with the crowd. We 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 do our own thing. We do what I think is best for for our community and the project. And so uh, the BNB uh, address uh, you saw is because we're actually going to be issuing some portion of our tokens on the Binance chain. Nice. And the reason for that is we uh, are looking to secure our uh, second uh, listing on Binance Dex. Nice. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, you, you want to lay the groundwork for Binance, uh, you know, uh, Binance, uh, centralized version of Binance um, down the line. So, I mean, everything is sort of, there, there's been a plan to everything. Yes. Um, this hasn't, you know, this this has been by design, um, and, and we're just sort of slowly moving moving through the phases. And uh, it's yeah, it's exciting, exciting time for the project. That is exciting. Well, I guess that's pretty much all my questions. It's been a, uh, I think it's been about 20, 25 minutes. It's perfect. Uh, is there anything else before you go, Ian, that you would like to let anyone know about uh, in terms of Ferrum Network before we leave? Oh man, no, uh, just please, you know, join our socials. Uh, I'm 24 seven on telegram. You ever want to reach out to me, they, you, you know, always feel free to PM me. I'm an open book. Um, you know, look out for, uh, Bitmax unifier wallet is coming out in, in about 30 to 45 days, uh, Binance decks. And then, and then we'll see where we can take it from there. Awesome. You know what? You have a, a little bit of a reputation before you go online. You know that, right? <laughs> I hope it's a good one. It is. It is. Uh, people say that this is what they say about you. I swear to God, it's hilarious. So, like to end this all with, uh, <laughs> people said that Ian's the type of guy that when you live in, he's your neighbor. He says hello to you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's true. <laughs> that's true. It was just so funny. Like I was, I was in a group of like 400 people. They're like, yo, Ian's such a nice guy. I'm like, oh, I'll bring him in. I brought you into that group. And then they were saying that before you got in the group, like, oh, he's such a nice guy. He's like the guy who would say hello to you in the morning. <laughs> I was dying. It was so funny. Wow. But uh, yeah, you guys definitely can message Ian. His last name is friend for a reason. He'll act like your friend. He's awesome. Um, I've had a really positive experience with him, with Ferrum, with the people attached to Ferrum. So definitely do check it out. Don't miss out. Um, you know, subscribe, like, share the video if you like to anyone who doesn't really know about Ferrum because when it comes out, uh, you know, you'll have to have a gas war if you got in. And if you didn't, you'll have to wait for BitMax a few days later. It's going to be exciting. I'm really, uh, I'm really looking forward to the launch of Ferrum Network to see what it does and where it goes. And not just for the short term, for also the long term to see if you guys achieve and will achieve, not just if you will achieve all these really great things. And I'm really excited for that Unifier wallet because it's just that peace of mind. If I can put on a half a Bitcoin or a Bitcoin on a wallet and know that if anything happens to my phone or something happens, um, sure, we have our key and seed phrases and stuff, but it's just like that peace of mind where I could probably just do a couple simple tasks and get my, my crypto back. That would be amazing. So, yeah, that's pretty that's much all I have to say. I'm glad, I'm glad you recognize the value in that. Uh, yeah, we're really excited for, for version one launch. Look out for that soon. And Joel, it was a pleasure. Let's, let's do one of these again. Uh, maybe will. an update in a couple months from now. Absolutely. We'll have to do, uh, I'll have to do a little bit of a Unifier wallet demo for everyone. Check it out. You know, do a little beta testing. And then I'll do a video for that one. So guys, just uh, wait. 
next month or two will be out. I'll do a quick video of that so you guys can all see what it's like to use if you haven't used it yet at that point. And then obviously I'll get Ian on after, you know, all this stuff's kind of launched and they've been starting to go down the path and we'll, you know, have a little bit of an update to see where you're at. Great, man. Looking forward to it. Thanks again, Joel. Cheers. Have a good one, everyone. It's Coach K signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Have yourselves a great day. Oh,